So what is linear phase EQ? First, we need to think about what sound itself is. Sound itself is vibrations that spread through the air molecules. And when they reach our eardrums, they transmit a pattern to our brain that we perceive as sound. Those vibrations come in the form of sine waves. Just like if you imagine you have a pond and it's completely still and you skim a pebble across that pond. When the water is disturbed, you see those little ripples. Those are waves that are also sine shaped. In fact, air responds to energy much like water responds to energy. So a lot of the things that we can observe in water also occur in the air and we perceive that as sound. All of the sounds that we hear in the real world, whether that comes from a synthesizer, speech, instruments, objects, all of those sounds are made from combined sine waves. Let me show you what I mean. That's basically just a simple triangle wave in Serum, one of my favorite synths. One of the interesting things about Serum is that if you click on the pencil icon in the oscillator section, you bring up the table editor. Now in here, you can see there's a graph that shows individual frequencies that make up the waveform. Now in this case, I have 10 frequencies making up this triangle-like shape. Now it's not a perfect triangle, as you can see. And in fact, if you were to progressively remove those frequencies, you'd see that that triangle becomes less and less triangle-shaped until you're down to one frequency in which case obviously it's just one sine wave. Okay so now I'm in a fresh instance of Serum and I'm inside the table editor and you can see I have one sine wave. How this table editor works is each of these columns has a space to create a frequency. This is the root frequency or the fundamental frequency. Above that is the opportunity to make one at twice the frequency. In fact, I'll take that first one away. You'll see there'll be two sine waves instead of the one. The next one would be three. So that's three sine waves instead of the one. And that's how you can create a waveform that has lots of different frequencies in it. And what I haven't explained yet is that every frequency also has a phase position, which means the point at which that waveform starts. So look at this sine wave. It begins here on what we call the zero crossing and it moves downwards and then back towards the zero crossing and then up into the positive phase. So that's the positive phase, that's the negative phase. Now, as you see, if I move the value in the bottom table, I can adjust the start point of that sine wave. Now, that's very important because if I have a regular sine wave and I add another sine wave, the way that they mix is partly governed by the phase relationship between them. So I can get very different waveforms based on the phase position of each frequency. So look, the bottom line is there's two types of EQ. Minimum phase EQ, which is the normal EQ that all analog EQs are and most plugins are. And then there's linear phase EQ, which is a very special particular type of digital EQ that's designed not to disrupt the phase relationship between the frequencies that are affected by the EQ itself. So minimum phase EQ actually changes the phase relationship between the frequencies that make up the full sound as it changes the volume of those frequencies that make up the sound. So what's the point of linear phase EQ? Well, in theory, it should sound clearer to EQ a sound without disrupting the individual phases of the frequencies that make up that sound. Now, most of the time, that makes not that much difference to the actual EQ tonal effect of the EQ. However, there is a massive advantage when you absolutely need to keep phase coherence between two sources. So for example, if you have two microphones capturing a snare and you want to EQ the recording of one of those microphones, if you were to use linear phase EQ, you would avoid destroying the phase coherence between that microphone and the recording from the other microphone that captured the snare at the same time. In practice, however, that does come at the cost of pre-ringing artifacts. And more to the point, that's a bit of an old school consideration. I think for most modern music, we're not capturing live instruments with multiple mics and that kind of thing. Most music these days is, you know, hip hop and electronica and the derivatives of those genres where things are samples and synthesizers and samples of synthesizers and that kind of thing. And so the importance of phase coherence is not as big as it might have been in the days of multi-miking a drum kit, for example. 
Also, linear phase EQ comes at the cost of latency. You have a massive latency. Whenever you use a linear phase EQ plugin, you'll notice that it's very difficult to play your keyboard or your door starts to respond much more slowly as there's an extra buffer time required to calculate that linear phase EQ. So in conclusion, I would say for the most part, you don't really need to worry about linear phase EQ. I think the only times where it's absolutely necessary, normally it's baked into the software and you can't switch it off. For everyday regular EQing, you're almost certainly going to be best off with minimum phase EQ. So anyway, if you're interested in learning about EQ, you should really check out my Mega EQ tutorial series, The Way of the EQ Chameleon. And I'll be using that series to give some real practical applications of linear phase EQ, as well as, of course, every other type of EQ, because it's a very detailed and extensive series.